how could we possibly make the human race uh, multi-planetary? When you think that since 1957, with, with Sputnik's launch, that of all the thousands upon thousands of rockets that have left the Earth, every single one of those rockets has taken with it from the surface of the Earth every gram of material, whether it's water or food for people or energy or batteries or whatever it was, that it, everything that it would ever need throughout its entire lifetime, which in many cases could be decades, they've had to drag it from the Earth. And you pay such a price to bring things to space from the Earth that if we could begin to use resources in space, it would dramatically change the equation. You gotta be able to utilize space resources to survive there. You've got to be able to live off the land. You know, sometimes, if you look at a Conestoga wagon pulled by horses, I like to point out to people that that was, in a sense, the spaceship of its time. A, a multi-purpose exploration and settlement vehicle. And the motors of that multi-purpose vehicle were horses or oxen propelled by grass. They lived off the land. If we had had to import all the propellant for the horses and oxen that would have been used to try and settle the North American continent in our experiment, it wouldn't have happened. The people had to survive by what they hunted for, what they harvested. They had to live in buildings they built by using what the land provided. Unless we can do that on this new frontier, as we did in the old frontier, there will be no frontier. There's some debate about where we should do our first colonies. Some people say we should do it free floating. You know, why do we have to go to some planetary body? Why can't we just, you know, go to a, an asteroid and mine resources there, get the metals we need and everything else, and build a colony? Personally, give me a Taurus. Give me a large enough space that we can plant our crops and, and grow and be self sustaining. I personally, believe that the ultimate love for humanity and the ultimate faith in humanity is living in, in, in something that humans made. Because boy, if they make a mistake, you're dead. <laughs> that's faith. One of the things that's neat about free space, we can build habitats in space that rotate and produce what we call artificial gravity. And you can build those in such a way that we can basically reproduce the 1G gravity field of the Earth in space and the climate. You can't do that on the moon, and you can't do that on Mars, because you're stuck with the gravity of the object you're on. I think the big action is gonna be the space between worlds, because that's where the resources are essentially infinite, and we have the space to build anything as big as we want forever. Some people say the moon uh, might be a, a good place to start because you know maybe you could beam back solar energy. There might be actual export products that could help make it sustainable. By the way, we can terraform the moon. People say, well, no, you can't. There's such low gravity. Yeah, you could. You could start by putting domes over the craters and then you could move on from there by just pumping uh, atmospheric gases in at a rate that's higher than you're losing them. There's already an atmosphere on the moon, and it's extremely tenuous, and that's just from the, the outgassing and the gases and, and the dust and things like that that have been created by us being up there. We'll go to the moon, we will set up a permanent base on the moon, and we will figure out all those things we need to know and find out all the things that we learn and decide when this is worthwhile and when we've invented enough things. And then we'll go further and we'll go to Mars.
Mars is a real destination because it's much more Earth-like. It has the same uh, amount of land, basically, as Earth. It's a third the size because it has no oceans. And it's got a roughly Earth-like day-night cycle. You know, it's about 24 hours, 23, something like that. It's just slightly off. It's got an atmosphere. You know, potentially you could terraform Mars. Maybe you could, you know, if you could start you know, if you could find enough carbon dioxide and water and things in the ground, maybe start pumping it into the atmosphere, you might be able to create an Earth-like habitat over hundreds of years. So that's one line of thinking, too, that you keep building. There's no way you can keep building on the moon. It's always going to be an airless rock. But, but Mars, potentially you could. I'm not a big fan of robots. I love software, but I don't like robots. What it takes them a week or a month to do, a human could do in an afternoon. When you start sending people, going to be some guy, he's up there, he's looking out the window and goes, what's that? A probe doesn't do that. A probe looks for what it's told to look for. Bugs Bunny's over here dancing up and down. It wasn't programmed to look for Bugs Bunny. It doesn't see Bugs Bunny. People see stuff. This is the exciting thing. This is what's going to happen. This is day two at the NASTAR Center. We're now ready for the real space flight simulation. So let's get in and let's get started. They're signing up now. And uh, there's still that apprehension, but there's that belief. There's that now that that mindset shifted slightly. People of all ages, um, anywhere from 22 to 88 years of age, um, they are going to be going to space in our lifetime. That's wonderful. It's pretty exciting. Here he goes. Get on it now. He's at five, six, seven. He's just kind of pursing his lips, but only getting a cheek full of air in. Eyes are gone. Look, he's gone already. That hurts. Now, G's are back down to 1.2. Oxygenated blood is returning to his brain. He does a spunky chicken as he wakes up. And now he's starting to realize, ooh, where am I? And the instructor's saying, don't forget, we got you on video camera. Oh, I'm on video? OK. Yeah, I'm on video. How's my hair look? My hair look good? <laughs> Every time we do that, you get one step closer to the actual flight flying into space. Three, two, one, launch. Looking good, Tom. How you feeling? We got seven billion people. You find enough with the right motivators. Send them. Let them go to Enceladus. Why not? They will sign. You know, like I sign, you sign. I don't care if I hurt my toe. Let them go. And certain private space organizations are looking to do exactly that. 